It all began with a glimmer on August 6, 2025, a moment so quiet, so sterile in a lab, and yet so deeply unsettling in its implications. The James Webb Space Telescope, the most powerful observatory in human history, was forced into emergency override mode. Not for a supernova, not for a black hole, but for something far more local and far more terrifying, a comet, or at least something that looked like one, designated 3I Atlas. It was first assumed to be another interstellar wanderer, cold, silent, and predictable. But when Webb's sensors locked on and the first wave of data poured in, what they captured wasn't just unexpected. It was impossible. The chemical signature it revealed didn't fit any natural model. The ratios were grotesque, the elements mismatched, the behavior erratic. And as the numbers kept arriving, one fear began to quietly thread its way through the minds of every astrophysicist watching the feed. What if this isn't a comet at all? What if this is something sent? Stories like this are exactly why you should subscribe right now, so you never miss these deep dives into discoveries. That could change our view of the universe forever. The first sign that something was terribly wrong came from the comet's coma, the bright envelope of gas surrounding its nucleus. Normally at this distance, six astronomical units from the sun, a comet should be asleep, frozen, inert. The sunlight out there is weak, too feeble to cause any meaningful outgassing, but 3i Atlas was already active, violently so. James Webb picked up spectral lines dominated not by water vapor as expected, but by carbon dioxide, a lot of it eight times more than water. That ratio, 8-1, was not just unusual, it was unprecedented. Typical comets barely reached 0.7. Even Borisov, the last interstellar visitor, hovered around 0.5. This was something else, a body spewing carbon dioxide at a rate that couldn't be explained by temperature or solar proximity. It was as if the object had been designed to vent this exact compound under conditions where nature wouldn't permit it. Even stranger, the coma was ghostly thin. There was almost no dust, no solid debris, no typical chaos, just gas. Controlled, smooth and highly specific gas emissions that hinted at a different kind of chemistry one alien to our understanding of comet formation. As the Webb telescope locked in deeper, the story turned darker. Its sensors picked up something even more disturbing than gas, nickel. Strong, consistent nickel spectral lines started appearing across the ultraviolet and near-infrared bands. Not traces, not anomalies, but powerful signals, clear, repetitive, and real. Nickel lines stacked perfectly above the background, rising in concentration the closer the object came. At 3.8 astronomical units, the output was already measuring above 10 to the 21st atoms per second. By 285 astronomical units, it had increased by an entire order of magnitude. But the shark wasn't the presence of nickel. It was what was missing. Iron. Across all instruments from Webb to the very large telescope to Gemini, iron was absent, flat, dead. No signal, no trace, not even noise. And that's not normal. In every natural comet and meteorite ever recorded, nickel and iron are partners. Their ratio is tightly coupled, one part nickel to 15 parts iron always, until now. 3i Atlas broke this rule in the most violent way possible. Nickel outweighed iron by more than 40 to 1. There's no known natural process that can create such a split. In labs, separating these metals takes energy, machinery, intent. And here, drifting silently through space, was an object doing it passively, or maybe not passively at all, even before the chemical signatures were fully decoded. Something else caught the eye of the PanStars tracking network. 3i Atlas was accelerating, but not like a comet would, not from solar heating or pressure. It was too far from the sun, too cold for sublimation jets to generate that much momentum. And yet over the span of just 72 hours, the object's velocity increased by 0.12 ms2, that number may sound small, but for a body 11 kilometer wide, the size of a city, that kind of acceleration is immense, like seeing a cruise ship pick up speed in the middle of a dead calm motion without engines. The change wasn't smooth either. Analysts observed micro jumps, jittery flickers layered over the main arc of motion, as if something inside the object was turning on and off and on again. Attempts to explain it through outgassing, fractured crusts or solar winds failed, None could match the rhythm. None could explain the regularity, because it was regular. Every 7.2 hours, 
Three Eye Atlas brightened sharply, predictably like a lighthouse. The brightness curve wasn't chaotic like tumbling debris. It was locked clockwork. Some suggested a sheet like surface catching sunlight, others proposed a hollow rotating frame. But one thing was clear this wasn't a rock. It was something moving with precision. And here's where the science begins to tremble. Because when everything is ruled out, when sublimation, randomness, and chaotic structure all fail, what remains is a possibility no one wants to face. That 3 eye atlas is engineered, built, manufactured. Perhaps not by intention. Perhaps it's debris. A fragment. A derelict vessel from a civilization that died before Earth grew forests. But maybe it's something worse. Something alive. Probe still active. A mechanism still responding. A system that sees us and doesn't care. One that follows a trajectory not set by nature, but by design. Because no comet should wake up in the deep freeze, emit metallic nickel without iron, accelerate without fuel and spin with mechanical rhythm. And yet here it is, doing all of that in front of our best instruments, with no effort to hide. The James Webb override wasn't just a technical reaction. It was a whisper of panic, an unspoken consensus that this isn't normal. That this might be the first time we're looking directly at alien machinery. And even if we're wrong, the simple fact that we can't tell the difference anymore, that alone is the warning. As the acceleration data sparked debate across observatories, a new stream of information emerged, one that was even harder to dismiss as natural. The light curve. Photometric data from Gemini South and the Test Space Telescope revealed a periodic brightening of 3 eye atlas every 7.2 hours. That in itself wouldn't be too unusual. Many comets and asteroids tumble and reflect sunlight in repeating patterns. But this was no chaotic tumble. The brightness spikes were too clean, too exact. They didn't fade gradually or flicker irregularly, like the spin of an irregular rock. They appeared and vanished like a beacon, on and off in perfect intervals. Even when gas emissions increased and the object accelerated, this light rhythm didn't change. It held its cycle like a metronome. This stability suggested something far more structured, something that wasn't just responding to sunlight randomly, but reacting with precision. Some theorized it could be a light sail, a wide reflective structure designed to catch solar radiation. Such a system could in theory account for both the acceleration and the regular flashing pattern. Others proposed a rotating platform with flat panels, but all agreed. The behavior didn't match any known natural object. This wasn't a spin. It was a signal, a mechanical pulse. And with every pass, it whispered the same message to the instruments watching from Earth. I am not what you think I am. The moment everything shifted came not from the object itself, but from the people observing it. On August 6th at 2.11 GMT, ground-based observatories sent an alert to the Webb Control Center. The spectral data pouring in from other telescopes couldn't be ignored. CO2 emissions off the charts, metallic readings spiking, and a sudden velocity curve that made no gravitational sense. That's when it happened. The emergency override, an extremely rare protocol that interrupts every scheduled observation and diverts the James Webb Space Telescope from its long-term mission to investigate a single anomaly. It's a move that burns precious time, fuel and budget, and it's only been executed a handful of times since the telescope was launched, and never before for an interstellar object. Within minutes, the override chain climbed past committees over project timelines and landed directly on the desk of the project scientist. The approval had to be unanimous, and it was. Webb pivoted, its instruments recalibrated, and at 2.17 GMT, it locked onto 3i Atlas with the NIR spec instrument. What came down in those first packets of data wasn't just strange, it was historic. The spectra didn't show the icy fingerprint of a comet. They showed a carbon chemistry so extreme, so volatile, that it made every known solar system body look tame. The decision to override wasn't just a scientific choice. It was a silent alarm. The most advanced telescope ever built had just paused the cosmos to chase a machine.